This video is meant as an introduction to Lessons With Me. I'm Scott Sterling. My lesson studio is called Sterling Low Brass. I teach all brass instruments, trumpet, French horn, tenor trombone, bass trombone, baritone horn, tuba, because I know that the fundamentals of tone, technique, and articulation for brass instruments are, are more similar than they are different. Um, one thing that I, in fundamental of playing uh, and brass is to have good tone, articulation, and um, tone technique and articulation. And so, one more up I do is to do what I call a long tone and articulation exercise, which sounds like this. <laughs> I also recommend using just a mouthpiece to do that. And the way I hold the mouthpiece is by the shank, and I put my fingers in such a way that I open my use my middle finger as a very open valve. So I give myself a little a little bit of back pressure, but not much. I do that same um, exercise on, on an arpeggio, which is. The second part of the exercise is a lip, what I call lip slur, and where I'm going between the the, um, the arpeggios of do do so do so do so do me do me do me and so forth. <clears throat> I go up one octave and I go down three. Um, and when I get down to B flat, I do the same. I go up two octaves and down three octaves. When I get to A, I do the lip, the, the, the lip slur exercise. And I do that until I get to about maybe G flat or F, which it takes me about 15 minutes to do. And that, um, it is... Help my lip get all the exercise it needs for the day. I don't really have to play any solos or any um, things I want to do. Although it's, you know, makes playing fun to do that. In my lessons, my students get a um, an eight-page uh, ebook called Optimal Brass Playing, in which I list the um, the ten areas um, which make for really good brass playing, which are <clears throat> wind power. Uh, controlling your deep breathing. Second one, lips, embouchure, that which does the buzzing. Um, how to, to make them buzz the best to give a good tone. Third, the back of the tongue, which controls the pressure of the airstream. And that's how you play and uh, the lip slurs and the arpeggios. And the front of the tongue, which articulates. Uh, using the mouthpiece for buzzing. Um, the fingers of your right hand, which... Um, holds the valves or handles the, the, the slide, the left hand which hold, holds the instrument, how to hold it without giving you too much strain. Um, eight is playing dynamically, which is speed of the air. If you're playing forte, your, your air is going very quickly. If you're playing piano or soft, your air is going very slowly. But it's very important to support the air by breathing the bottom of your lungs because your note wants to die. Uh, nine is uh, what I call setting the onset which is putting all the stuff that you think of to um, the tone you're playing, um, the, the partial you're playing in, the dynamic you're playing, um, how you're going to articulate, put all the stuff together so that you avoid it, what's called a splia, which is when a brass, uh, brass player, especially a horn player, um, tries to play a high note, but they're not focused on it. And so instead of playing one note, they play like three. And I'm going to try not to splia right now. And that was a little one right there. Ba By the way, it's a double half. I have an incredible range. Eight, the, the last one is balanced practice. Um, using your long tones, lip, lip flexibility, and articulation exercises to give you the foundation for what you're going to do. <clears throat> Another thing that I do in lessons is that I have my, my students play duets with me so that they're exercising their sight reading ability 
and their ability to uh, expand their listening awareness. Um, and these duets, the simply the line one is the melody, line two is the harmony. Um, the person who plays line one leads, this person playing line two supports. If um, the players are playing like that, then the piece will sound great because it sounds balanced. This is the foundation for playing in a large ensemble um, because all, all uh, band directors and orchestra conductors want their ensemble to have a balanced sound, but that's not going to happen unless the, the mu musician knows how to listen. Um, so these are some of the... This is a book of um, duets that I can do, compose a duet line. They're originally um, solos from the introductory melodious etudes by Ferdinand Sieber, um, compiled by Alan Raff for trombone. And I made du uh, duets of all of them because um, I thought it would be more interesting and more participatory for the student and teacher if they're duets, not just um, not just solos. So let me play for you one. Here's a challenging one. Look at number 30. Yes, syncopations. And the bottom line goes like this. So yeah, the ba 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 going on. It's quite interesting. Um, there are 65 duets in this book. Um, I wrote. I wrote duets for all of them. And um, also, I uh, have written a book that I am really struggling to figure out how to get it out into the marketplace cheaply. Uh, it's called Page to Performance. It's about sight reading and expanding listening awareness. I use 10 of my own compositions um, in duet, trio, and quartet form uh, to, as uh, sight reading exercises so that uh, I avoid copyright issues. Um, and I have an excellent uh, um, method for teaching sight reading, which is basically understanding all the music on the page uh, before you play it. Because uh, even looking at something like, let's say, number 10. You notice that number 10, it says, there's no key signature. Um, it's, in, it's in bass clef. There's no key signature, and the time, the time signature is 4-4. Four, four. Core note equals 90. Now, all that information means something. In 4-4 four, four time, you're counting 1, 2, 3, 4. And the tempo is 90, which is two beats in three seconds, which is which is about by the way, I'm clicking my tongue. If it sounds like a woodblock, it do that. And then knowing that information, looking at the notes, ba da 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 ba da 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 be able to sight sing it in your mind. Before you play it, because um, if you can hear it in your mind, you can play it really well. Uh, and that basically is um, what we go over, go a lo uh, over a lot of of uh, instrument technique playing and sight reading, and um, so that uh, you, as a brass player, even a singer, because I, I really wonderfully um, believe in uh, sight singing ability. Um, especially it's really good as a musician as an instrument musician because if you can hear the tune in your head you can play it um, once one thing I advise is if you uh, are in your choir as well as your band or orchestra you are a much better musician than anyone who is just a single mu um, instrumentalist being a multi-instrumentalist is better than a single instrumentalist so that's what we do in lessons and I hope to see you on the other side